Ha, kids! I'm going to do a quick uh, review of the different units. We're going to start with kinematics, because that was unit one. A um, couple things, so let's just start with uh, some of the basic terms. Uh, you should know the difference between distance, which most of the time we labeled as D, versus displacement, which most of the time we've, we labeled as X or maybe Y. Remember, distance is how far you travel. This one is a scalar. And displacement is how far you end up from your starting point. This one is a vector. So, for example, if you walk 4 meters to the right plus 3 meters to the left, you have traveled a distance of 7 meters and you have a displacement of 1 meter to the right. Um, so yeah, that was that. Um, make sure you understand the difference between speed and velocity. Speed is just how fast you're going. Okay. Velocity is how fast you're going plus the direction you're going. Remember, a lot of times speed, they have kind of a script V, where velocity is a just an actual V. Um, but uh, this one, again, is going to be your vector. This is your scalar. Um, average speed is just distance over time, where average velocity is displacement over time. They both will be measured in meters per second. Um, for example, let's say you are running around a track, and it is a 400-meter track and you go one time all the way around. Well, the distance you travel would be 400 meters divided by the time, your displacement would be nada, so nothing, because uh, you ended up back at, the st at your starting point, okay? So again, displacement, how far you end up from your starting point and the direction. All right, um, remember, a really important uh, term from this unit was acceleration. Acceleration is the rate your velocity changes. Um, I like to say, hey, you know what? I have this really sweet car. My sweet car goes from 0 to 60 miles per hour. And isn't that super duper impressive? Uh, yeah, but how much time does it take? Which is why acceleration is your change in velocity over time. Um, remember, so that means your units are going to be meters per second per second or meters per second squared. Um, remember, this is just the rate your velocity is changing. So if you have a an acceleration of 5 meters per second squared, this means every second your speed, your velocity is going to change and become 5 meters per second more in this positive direction. So if you are starting at zero, after one second, you're going five meters per second. After two seconds, you're going 10 meters per second. If you are starting out, let's say, I call that way the positive direction. Well, if you are starting out going 10 meters per second that way, then after one second, your velocity will change so it becomes five meters per second more this way. So after one second, you would be going five meters per second left. After two seconds, you would be stopped, and so on. Um, one of the super duper important things to remember, remember we typically did this with our fingers, but uh, you could say, hey, you know what? My acceleration is pointing this way, my velocity is pointing that way. Oh yeah, that means I'm speeding up. My acceleration is pointing this way, my velocity is pointing this way. Remember, like I said, you should you would be doing this with your fingers. Oh yeah, that means I'm slowing down. My acceleration is pointing this way, my velocity is pointing, I don't know, down. Um, oh, that means I'm changing direction. So remember to... to Accelerate, you can speed up, you can slow down, you can change your direction. Um, remember, more on this later on, but remember, how do you accelerate? Well, you have to have a net force. But that was some of the basic, basic terms. Now let's make sure we kind of go over some of the basic graph stuff. So 
If you remember, we had we did this is where you're introduced to graphs, and obviously you are going to be expected to know how to do graphs. So let's say I have a displacement versus time graph. And I don't know, your graph looks something like this, and then like this, and then like this, and then like this, or something, whatever. Um, if you wanted to explain this, well, hey, look, this is a displacement versus time graph. Remember, it's always graph, slope, or area all year long it's always going to be graph slope or area that's going to tell you something so in this case your graph tells you about your displacement your slope well my slope in this case would be meters per second rise over run oh meters per second oh that's going to be velocity that's going to tell me about velocity my area would be meters times seconds oh yeah that's nothing so um but again, don't memorize things, understand and apply. So if you look at this, this example would be, hey, look, this is a straight line. I have a positive slope, so I'm moving in the positive direction. And it's at a constant speed. And then I'm speeding up, going in the constant direction. And then I'm slowing down, going in the positive direction. And then if this is horizontal, I'd be stopped. And if what if I wanted to go backwards? Well, I'd have to go like this, and then maybe like this. So, hey, I'm speeding up backwards. I'm backwards at a constant speed. Um, but again, do not memorize, understand, understand, understand. Um, if you had, we did velocity versus time graphs. Okay. Again, if you want to know about the motion, what would you do? You would look at the graph. Okay. So let's say you had motion like this. Well, oh, that means my velocity is positive. Well, that means I'm moving forward or in the positive direction. Hey, look, my velocity is staying the same. It's four, it's four, it's four, it's four. I'll call that four. Uh, so therefore, it is a positive constant velocity. So again, if you want to look at the, if you want to know about the motion, look at the graph. You know, if I had something like this, hey, look, my velocity is getting smaller. Hey, look, my velocity is zero. So therefore, I'm stopped. Hey, look, my velocity is getting bigger, but now I'm going backwards. So if you want to know about the motion in this case, we'll look at the graph. Well, in this case, if you want to know about the displacement, look at the graph. If you want to know about the motion, you better look at the slope of the graph. Um, in this case, slope would be meters per second per second. Oh, well, that is acceleration. Again, we're not memorizing. We are understanding. So, hey, look, I'm not accelerating. I have negative acceleration. I am not accelerating. I have negative acceleration. And maybe I'll have positive acceleration. And then maybe I'll have some more positive acceleration. Whatever. Um, and then the in this case, the area would be, you know, the area would be seconds times meters per second. Hey, look, that's going to be meters. So the area here would be my displacement remember though you're always finding area you know there here so if you look you can tell I moved forward more than I moved backwards and then I'm gonna move forward again a little bit okay so that would be my V versus T and then you have okay an acceleration versus time graph again if you want to know about acceleration well look at the graph Okay, if you look at the slope, well, slope would be meters per second squared per second. What the heck is that? It's something maybe you'll learn later on, but for this class, it's nothing. Um, and then it, the area would be meter, actually, it would be seconds times meters per second squared, which means I end up with meters per second, which means the area would be my velocity. But uh, again, I don't know, maybe you have a graph that looks something like this. I don't know, but whatever. Um, so again, don't memorize things. Understand, understand, understand. All right, so that was, that was a huge part of this unit. So again, if you need help with that, you know, seek out help because that's going to be coming up for sure on the AP test. Um, and then we did our kinematics formulas. Remember, 
our kinematics formulas came about from this graph where you had V and T and I said hey you know what I am gonna go from some random initial and some random final um, and then we got all our formulas remember we looked at the slope and the slope from the slope graph we ended up with this formula and this is on the equation sheet we looked at the area one way to find the area was to go this plus this and you ended up with this equation again that one's on the equation sheet uh, you did some algebra and you got this equation this equation was on the equation sheet um, but remember there was also you could have said hey I'm gonna find this whole rectangle and subtract this piece to get this area which is this this one minus a t squared and then there's always everybody's favorite which is not on the formula sheet because you know what the college board expects you to know average equals average because this is average velocity this is average velocity average equals average um, one of the things you really need to be careful with a really common mistake that students use is they want to use this formula way too much that form is a lovely formula to, if something's moving at a constant speed otherwise it tells you average speed it does not tell you instantaneous speed um, so there was our formulas and then we went from there we did free fall so let me just make sure you can see free fall and remember in a vacuum all objects fall at the same constant acceleration okay um so if you remember if you have a you know if you don't have if the only force acting on it is gravity so if i have a giant object versus a small object this giant object has a big fg this small object has a small fg well guess what if i was to write my f net equation i would get this giant fg equals this giant m times g which equals this giant m times a which equals hey look my acceleration equals g if i was to do it for this one i get this teeny tiny fg equals this teeny tiny m times g which is the same and oh look a equals g hooray all objects follow with the same sh constant sh acceleration okay um so that's super duper important remember when we were doing problems you draw your picture you know if we did our hang time lab this is what our picture looked like because we went up and then we came back down and then we labeled some points on our picture remember point a is right after it's left the ground point b would be the highest point point c is right before you get back to the ground and remember the nice thing about if you have symmetry you know like this point and this point which are you know hey whatever speed this is going up at is going to be the same as the speed that that's going down at um, as long as it's symmetrical the time up equals the time down all that other fun stuff hopefully you remember that um re but remember to do the problems it's always you do your picture you write down and then you say where are you going from on your picture so if we were doing our hang time we would be going from a to c or b to c or a to a to b and then you write down your givens remember your givens all depend on where you're going from if i'm going from a to c my displacement is zero because i'm starting and ending at the same spot if i'm going a to b my final velocity is zero why because if i jump straight up i eventually i stop if i go b to c my initial velocity would be zero so again it all depends on your st and your picture and then you write down your givens and then you would pick out your equation and then you would solve stuff but the same thing every time you draw your picture uh, you figure out your givens and then you write your equation and solve um, we had problems like this where we had projectiles which combined horizontal and vertical motion you know we started with this hey if I drop something versus I launch something horizontally 
okay they will both hit the ground at the same time why are they gonna hit the ground at the same time because vertically they're exactly the same um, remember to do these problems you do your XY chart you'd write down your givens well the only force acting would be the force of gravity so that means my Y is going to be 9.8 meters per second squared going that way which sometimes we call that negative but it all depends how you want to do it your initial velocity here is zero my a on this side is zero because remember this was hor this was constant motion um, we did problems like this where let's say I launch something up and it comes back down something like this and again the importance of symmetry here you know if I say hey I have this point right here well right here it's going this way if I broke it into its components and then right here it's going this way and if I broke it into its components well this vertical component has to be the same as that vertical component this horizontal component is going to be the same the whole time in fact it would be the same at the peak because your horizontal velocity is constant so hopefully, you know, if you remember to do these problems, you typically have to break the initial velocity up into its components like that. And then this would be like my VX. This would be my initial velocity Y. And then you would write stuff down and you could solve stuff that way. So this would be your, your initial velocity and break it down so if you need extra practice on any of that please 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 go and get extra practice obviously this was you know about 17 minutes of the unit one and unit one i think it took us almost six weeks to complete so i hope that helps bye kids